it, it has been one of the big questions uh, down through the ages. How do we understand death, suffering and disease mm-hmm. in a fallen world? And we see right. death in this world every day and we see all sorts of horrible things in this world every day. And in our own family, we had uh, a particular example close to home when I had a younger brother who died of a horrible brain disease. And it was, it was a horrible brain disease. And yet he was a great Bible teaching pastor, you know, Mm -hmm. and dealing with a real life example and how we struggle through this issue. And yet there are, there are answers. We don't have all the answers. We never will have all the answers. Mm -hmm. We're not God. Only God has all the answers. I wanted to write a book that was a gut level book because, you know, a lot of, books written on this topic sort of tend to be more, you know, God's in control, suck it up, (laughs) you know, that sort of thing. Uh, You just have to trust God. All things work together for good. Mm -hmm. You know, we're human. And as humans, we're just finite beings. We're fallible beings. We don't know everything. And we have to suffer through the things that happen in this world. And so we do ask those questions. Why? And at, at why why would this happen? You know, I've known of families where there's been a tragedy in the family and there's been someone uh, in the family who then becomes, you know, they're, they're people that go to church and a happy family, a tragedy happens and uh, some of them or one of them gets very angry at God and they just walk away from the church, so, church because they're so angry and they're saying, this is right. not there. It's not right. And mm-hmm. and they're almost shaking their fist at God. They're sort of wanting to show their anger at God that mm-hmm. that you shouldn't have allowed this. You shouldn't have done that. And and you're right. There, there are others who have used it as an excuse for saying you can't believe in God. So that's why it's important to be able to deal with this issue, but from a biblical perspective. So we've got to have the right way of thinking about death and suffering. So we have to start from that foundational history in mm-hmm. Genesis 1 to 11. You know, I had a a pastor once uh, who said to me, how can there be a loving God? Because how could he sentence people to hell? We've got to understand something. In a way, we sentence ourselves to hell. We rebelled against God. We can't live with a a loving God. We'd be separated from God forever. He he can't look upon sin. So he provided a way for us to come back to be with him, to save us from what we did. That's how we need to understand it. You know, it's, it's like when, when 9-11 occurred, that tragedy, um, I, I watching the news and you would see even uh, certain church leaders on there and say, we don't know why, why God allowed this. Well, we do know why. It's a fallen world, right? Mm-hmm. And because of our sin, these horrible things happen. Yeah, but why did those people die? Well, it's like in... In Luke, where the Tower of Siloam fell on people and 18 were killed, and Jesus asked the question, uh, were they worse sinners than others that they died? In other words, why did they die? Well, were they worse sinners than others that they died? And you know what his answer was? His answer was, repent, lest you also likewise perish. In other words, that was their time to die. Everyone's going to die. And that's the thing we need to remember. Everyone is going to die. 